This video is mastered in HDR, and for the best experience, you should watch it in HDR on a television or device with HDR support. You've probably heard that HDR is the next big thing in video. Hollywood, Netflix, Amazon, and broadcasters around the world have all embraced HDR as the future of images on our screens. It's the biggest change in video since we moved from analog to digital. HDR is going to replace traditional SDR video. Your choice is not whether to work in HDR, it's when. But making the move into HDR means changing your workflows. So today I wanted to answer the question, what do you need to work in HDR today? Hey, I'm Sam with Billado Services. I'm an independent filmmaker, colorist, and expert in video technologies, including HDR video. All right, let's break this down. There are three things you need to change in order to get started in HDR. The first is changing how you plan, expose, and record your images with your cameras. The second is changing how you set up and view images on your displays. The third is changing your digital workflows for getting images from your camera files onto your HDR screens. The good news is that today, it's easier than ever to make all of these changes and get started in HDR. In fact, most of you are already at least partially HDR ready and only need a little bit of work and upgrades to get started working in HDR. I go into far more detail on these three changes and how to actually do them in my digital course HDR from scene to screen, which you can purchase and view at masterhdrvideo.com. All right, let's talk about HDR at the camera side of things. If your camera shoots in RAW or in a 10-bit log format, technology-wise, it's already capturing in HDR. That's the whole point of camera log, to let cameras capture as much of the scene as they can so we can grade it in post and decide how much of the scene's dynamic range detail we want to keep in our final images. For HDR delivery, we'll keep and deliver most or all of it. What that means is that if you want to capture or shoot in HDR, all you'll really need to do in most cases is plan out the capture of scenes in high dynamic range instead of standard dynamic range, making creative use of the bright and dark regions of the image and the changes in brightness between scenes or setups. On the display side of things, you'll want a display that can interpret HDR signals and properly render HDR images. That could be an expensive HDR reference display, an intermediate HDR reference monitor like the small HD OLED 22 I use here at home, or it could be something as simple as a high quality HDR television that you can calibrate and set up like the LG C-Series OLED. What I don't recommend for getting started in HDR right now are HDR desktop displays with Display HDR 400 branding. These are limited in dynamic range and usually limited to the Rec. 709 color gamut. Some of the better Display HDR displays can work as long as you're connected to them using an I.O. card or box like the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Monitor 3G or better. Also, what I don't recommend for getting started right now in grading are the Atomos lineup of displays. The displays themselves are awesome and can render beautiful images, but you need a little bit more know-how in color processing to get them to be accurate in HDR for grading. That brings us to our third need, changing your color workflow. Today, most applications that work with digital video files have an HDR mode, which you'll turn on for grading and monitoring in HDR. I've made some tutorials in working in HDR in Adobe products, and I have a few more on the horizon for working in Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and some other applications. Fortunately, for the most part, once the programs are set up to work and monitor in HDR, at the most basic level, they just work. You can grade as you usually would and see the results on your HDR display. The key to making all of these applications work is color management and metadata. Colors are mapped into HDR, and HDR metadata is added to our video signals and master files to tell programs and devices to interpret the video data 
as HDR. If you want your images to work in HDR, you'll need to remove from your workflow all vestiges of your SDR color management, including using LUTs that can form your log into Rec. 709 SDR. And here's a hint, if you don't know that your look LUTs are converting into Rec. 709, they probably are. You'll need to update the look to work in HDR instead. I go into far more detail on how to do these things in HDR in my course, HDR from Scene to Screen, which is available now or soon for purchase on masterhdrvideo.com. So these are the things you need to change to get started working in HDR today. While it's pretty simple to outline, the key for you to be confident in making the change is knowledge and understanding. You can get some of that playing around with your content in HDR, but that can take some time to figure out and really use creatively. Fortunately, I have a number of courses covering HDR workflow, creative shooting for HDR, and color correcting for HDR, which are or will be available to purchase at masterhdrvideo.com, along with the many special topic videos that I publish there as well as here on this YouTube channel. This resource will help you get up and running in HDR creatively a lot faster than you would be otherwise. Head over there and check out the first course on HDR video, HDR from scene to screen, for a more in-depth discussion of what I've talked about here. And subscribe to this channel for more tips, tricks, and tools for working in HDR. Until next time, for Billado Services, I'm Sam Billado, and I'll see you soon.